Hey, this is George from Sale again. I'm back to talk a little bit more about magnets and copper. One of the most common experiments that we see in school and that children learn early on is the lens effect. How fun it is to take a copper pipe. Now, what we use in our lens effect is an extra thick walled copper pipe. And so that helps us get a little bit more drag effect. We have an N50 ring magnet that we had made so it perfectly fits in here and floats down inside the pipe without touching the side or getting stuck. So you can see what we're talking about is we just drop it in. You can see how it how long it takes. It'll take about nine or ten seconds for that magnet to fall all the way through this copper pipe. Well, this is one of the most common demonstrations. But what we've decided to do at Super Magnet Man is to give you a little bit more of a feel for how magnets and copper work in this lens effect or eddy current drag effect, as it's frequently called. What we're doing is as a magnet moves moves past copper, it actually turns the copper into a magnet and they're attracted to each other and as they're attracted to each other, it slows it down. Now the slower it goes, the less the effect. So that's what causes it to break but not stop. It will not stop it because as soon as the magnet stops moving, the effect stops. So another demonstration that we want to do is to see how this magnet works with coinage. We know that a penny is made out of copper or we know it's got some copper in it. Quarters have some copper in them too, as do dimes. So what we're going to do is we've set up this little uh, demonstration. I've set my two inch cube up in a pendulum form and we have a nickel in here as well. Let's see if a nickel is magnetic as well or has any magnetic property. So as we swing this across, you saw the quarter just took off. But you see that the nickel is not moving, whereas the dime and the penny continue to jump around. Let's do this one more time. I'll get the quarter back in the picture again. And we can watch this back and see how it does. You can see the quarter reacts quickly because of course the quarter is larger, but the nickel has not moved yet. So that lets you know that your dime, penny, and quarter have some copper in them and that allows them to be drug along with them as a magnet moves past it. Since copper works so well, we thought we'd try it with a little sheet of copper. So we've got a piece of copper that's a fairly thin sheet of copper. You can see it's already making the magnet move as we put it underneath here. But let's see what happens when we let it, the pendulum swing over it. You can see how it drags the copper back and forth. It's also slowing the magnet down, as we'll see in our following demonstration, how well that works. But one of the other things that I wanted you to see as to how well this works with the copper sheet, it works not only to drag it along, but watch how it does in picking it up. If I just set the magnet on top of it, that's not magnetic, so it's not doing anything, but if I grab the magnet and pull it up, it pulls this up with it. You can see how it's just pulling this straight up even. So it is attracted to it as it turns magnetic and the magnet is pulling away. It tries to hang to it, hang with it until it gets to the point that it just can't uh, support the whole weight of that copper. If it was about half the size of the copper, it would actually pick it up off of the, off of the table. Okay. Now what we want to do is we've put together a little example to show you another way of looking at how the magnet interacts with copper. And this is going to be relative to the breaking effect. The breaking effect is the ability that copper has as it becomes energized, as a magnet moves across it, it energizes it and turns it into a magnet at that point in time, and it creates some very interesting things. So the first thing is, I'll explain, what we've got here is we made a pendulum, and on this pendulum I have a two inch cube N52 magnet. And we've got the length just right so we can start with two bars of copper. These are two inches wide, one eighth inch thick, pure copper, okay? And so if I start the pendulum and swing, you get a feel for what it's going to do. This is with a three eighths inch air gap. So we can do this a couple of times and you see how as it approaches it, it just gently brings it to a stop. And we'll do it one more time. 
now what we want to do is increase the thickness of the copper by putting two bars together and we're going to decrease the air gap because we put two bars together instead of having a three-eighths air gap now we're going to have a quarter inch air gap now with two bars we have a quarter of an inch thick of copper and we'll take a look at our air gap again our air gap with this is about three-eighths of an inch a little uh, little somewhere in that three-eighths of an inch range and we're going to see how this affects the braking force as we pull it back and you see it's a little bit stronger that braking effect it catches it earlier and it makes it slow down smoother you'll see in the slow-mo shots how it tilts it forward and you can see how it works and how that braking force is bringing it to a stop. Okay. Now we have added a third bar and decreased the air gap even further. Let's see what that does to our fall. You can see how the increased copper is having an effect, but also decreasing the air gap is having an effect on this that actually makes it slow down even more. You can get a feel for how this works if we spin off of this and let it spin as it comes in. You see how it slows it down gently. This is part of the braking effect that we're talking about and wanted to give you this demonstration as we'll look at other demonstrations that are even more interesting in how, we, how the magnets operate in the presence of copper. Another demonstration I'd like to do, take just a second and show you, is let's have a race. This is something you see all the time on car shows and everything. If you want to see how things work and how, how two cars compare, you have a race. So that's what we're going to do, except we're going to have it with magnets. I have two of our one inch diameter, half inch thick, N50 magnets. I have a piece of aluminum that is almost an eighth of an inch thick, just a tiny bit thinner than our eighth of an inch thick copper. And so what we're going to do is hold both of these up and create a little bit of a ramp for them to slide down and we're going to see which one slides the best. The one that goes the fastest in this case happens to lose the race. So let's see how it goes. You can see they're both moving very slow, but the aluminum does seem to have the edge, as you can tell. The copper is doing a great job of holding that magnet. Even as I tilt it higher and higher, you begin to see the aluminum take a lot faster approach going down this thing. These are both almost exactly one-eighth of an inch thick, and so the thickness didn't make much of a difference. But you can see copper is I'd say nearly twice as good with this braking effect. And that's why a lot of our demonstrations do that. Now the next one is the one experiment that everybody really likes. It's been our most exciting video and everybody's enjoyed it on YouTube except this time we're doing it with copper instead of aluminum. Now we're ready for the big demonstration. This time, if you remember from the previous video, I had a six by four by one inch plates. Now what I have is a six inch diameter two inch thick N50 disc magnet. Now, in the other video, reading through the comments, one of the things people would ask from time to time is they would ask if it was the air cushion doing it. If maybe the fact that there's, this has this surface area and I'm dropping it on top of it, that it's the air slowing it down. So we're going to start our demonstration by showing you how much help the air cushion gives us. So if we take a look at this and just drop it. Not much help from air, okay? Now, and you'll see me spin it in the other demonstrations, so we'll try and match that and we'll spin it as well. Doesn't look like the air is helping us very much. Now we'll take a look. If you remember the previous demonstration was on aluminum. Since I have a different magnet, I'm going to use the same piece of aluminum again, but with a different magnet. And for those of you who are not from the U.S., yes, I know you call it aluminium. We just like to say a little faster, aluminum. Okay? So, let's set up now and see what it looks like on the aluminum. Now we're going to look at this with the same magnet and a one inch piece of aluminum as we drop it here. So you can see this is, this is sort of what we did before except since it's round it helps to spin it. You see we get a little bit of cushioning effect. You can see when I tilt it and drop it how it 
kicks up on the tail end and then sits down. We're getting a little bit of this braking effect here. We'll do it one more time. Now what we're going to do is take a look at what we get when we use copper. Now copper gives us a totally different perspective on this braking effect. Let's take a look. As you can see, it is hard to even get this magnet to roll from side to side. If I take it and pick it up at the same height and drop it, you see I'm giving it a spin to sort of give it a gyroscopic effect so that it makes it level and it settles out. But as you can see in the slow-mo, the, the part in slow motion, you'll see how it just flutters really slowly, but the magnetic effect is actually helping to level it out so it floats down evenly. Now one of the things that we get asked a lot about is what would it be like if you dropped it from a higher elevation? So this time I'm going to step on a little platform I've got so I can get a little bit higher up and let's take a look and see what it does from this, alpha, this elevation. You see it still fell, bounced up, and then settled back down as it went. We'll do that again. So you're getting an idea of how this effect works. We've got one more thing that we want to add to get it as high as we think we can and let it still flutter down. What we came up with is since we have a hole in the center of this magnet, we decided we'd get us a wooden dowel that fits almost exactly in that side. It goes right inside, gives us very little clearance so that we don't have any effect from this, gives us sort of a little handle with this. Now, all we have to do is get it up and we're going to try and see what happens from this elevation just to try and help hold the magnet flat as it falls. That way you get a little bit different view of how it does. So this time we'll go even higher. Go a little bit higher up still and let's see what happens. You can see that impact that it made as the magnetic braking effect happened and slowed it down, bounced it up, and then settled down. And you, don't, you can't tell it, but it is really adding a lot of weight to the magnet. When I try and pick it up, that magnetic effect really is holding on and making it weigh a lot more. You can see how that one did. That's dropping from about three feet high, and you can see the difference that it makes. Now, one of the other things that I think is just kind of cool to watch is how it does, as you saw with the aluminum, as I would let it float and it would flutter and then settle down, we can look at it this way in the copper. And you see how it just really cushions it as it goes down and slows the fall. So hopefully this gives you a little more insight about copper and magnets and the things you can do with them and how this braking effect works. And there's a lot of applications that are using this eddy current drag to slow things down and actually bring them nearly to a stop and then use conventional methods to make that last little bit of a stop. So hope you've enjoyed this demonstration. Remember, if you like this video, share it and subscribe to our channel. I shared it. Oh, I shared it. 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 <laughs>